Alright, so let's put this back together. I have my little screw in here to hold my spring. I got my little mark, so I just line them up and push it in and then try to line up the the um, hole the best I can and it, it may take a couple tries to get this um, just right so it uh, you know a lot of times that this don't line up automatically so um, you may have to mess with a little bit to get the hole to line up just right all right, and let's check the other side. All right, that looks good. Let's see if we can get one of these little guys started. So, um, yep, yeah, yeah. It's it's a little bit tedious. I, it takes some some work to get them started. Leave it a little bit loose. Rotate it over, and let's see if we can get the other one started. Um, like I said, it, it's kind of tedious messing with these little guys, so let's see here. Whoop. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that'll work. All right. Yeah. Tighten it up. There we go. And tighten this side up. There we go. Just a little snug. It don't have to be crazy tight. Looks good. All right. Now for our bell, let's put our focus bell back on here. Yeah. All right. Make sure not to cross thread these. So. looks good okay so now um, this right here this is plastic and what happens is I found that this actually lets light in right through here right here is kind of it, it bows up when I tighten it or something I don't know what the but this has a gap in it and it 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 makes it uh, kind of it whites it out it, it makes it too bright in there and I want all the light to come through the uh, objective lens. So what I do is, I just take me some tape. This is this black tape I've got here. And uh, get nice and square. And just kind of tape that in there, just like that. All right? And then I take my razor, and I cut this off. we go just like that make sure it's nice and snug in there and then take my razor again and cut this end off there we go all right there we go so got that then I make a little V shape right here with my razor again to get the tape out of the way of my adjustment screw. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just cutting around that adjustment screw a little bit to where the the um, you know it don't interfere with the adjustment screw. So let's we'll see how that looks. Make sure there's no bumps on it or nothing. So the adjustment screw can work all right. Do the same thing over here. Okay, yeah, there it is. Okay. Make sure there ain't no bumps in it or nothing like that. All right. And then I do the same thing around my screw holes to hold this thing on here. So I just go in here and just cut this a little bit. Just cut it around that hole. 
That way the screw holes can get through there. And um, let me see here. Make sure there's no bumps in it. Make sure it's smooth. Come around here to the other side and uh, cut around the screw hole. Making sure there's there's no bumps in it, keeping it kind of flat as I as I go. All right, so there it is, and you'd think they'd be formed to it, but for whatever reason they're not. So right there it is. So that ambient light that comes in here and here, it's uh, it'll help to seal that up. So now we can go ahead and put this back on. Take our screw out. Just a little bit. Okay. And stick this back on there. Let's line up our holes. And put our screw back in. Leave it kind of loose. Rotate it around and catch this hole over here. And there it goes. So now let's tighten it up a little bit. Snug it. That's all it needs. <clears throat> there we go. Alright, let's run these down a little bit. There we go. And let's put our caps back on. Now then... <clears throat> All right, so we got this now at two power. We've changed it from four power to two power. And um, I could always disassemble it and put it back on four power or move it up to six power. So now the objective lens here. So um, I've got a little piece here I've made to give me, uh, I'll paint this black and give me the ability to make it adjustable to where I can adjust for different uh, ranges. So I take this little piece out here and um, I'm going to slide this in because the two power scope, it needs the uh, focus brought back in. So I have to screw it out. I'll screw it out until I can see it right there. All right, I got to screw it out quite a bit to adjust for that two power. So um, let me see here how that looks. Oh, yeah, that looks that looks really, really good. So. I'll adjust that out now from there for my parallax error to get rid of all the parallax error at say 10 or 20 yards, whatever whatever I decide it needs to be. And uh, that's my deal. Now I'll either paint this black and insert it in here, just like that, and paint me a line or scribe me a line here and on this to where I know where the zero's at. Now the great thing about this is the uh, 15 millimeter objective lens is when I set these up to adjust the parallax error to get to uh, eliminate the parallax error, it's one revolution equals 10 yards. So let's say right now the parallax error is zero at 10 yards. So um, to increase it to 20 yards, I'd screw it in one full turn. So um, that'd be 20 yards and then screw it in some more, one full turn, that'd be 30 yards. And then with my line, I always know where to zero at, so my um, 10 yards would be back to 20 and then back to 10. So that's really convenient about the 15 millimeter objective lens because it, it tends to be one revolution equals 10 yards. So, so you can um, uh, really set this up nice to where you could adjust it out to 30 yards or 20 yards or whatever you're shooting. And the main thing is the error in the... Um, um, in your shooting, it really isn't going to make much difference. If I set this up to say 20 yards um, and I shoot 30 or 10, it, it really doesn't matter. What does matter is my ability to range it. Is it 30 yards away or is it 25 yards away or 10 yards away? Or That's really where this comes in. It, it's more of a practice thing to uh, 
range estimation. It, it really is kind of aids you in that, I guess. But um, I like the ability, so um, I have a lot of these little scopes. I guess there are a few of them set up like this to where I could, I could uh, guess the parallax error to whatever I want, and, um, and then just to guess it from there in one full revolution. So if I were to set this up at, say, 25 yards, and I was going to shoot 15 yards, I'd screw it out. And, and that'd be, you know, 10 yards different. So if I was going to shoot zero at 25 yards and shoot 35 yards, I'd screw it in like that. So, you know, that, that's the basic idea about this. And what I did was I just took this and sanded it down until it fit right in there like that. And then I, I just leave it. I don't glue it or nothing. I just, uh, just leave it in there. And this one, the uh, end of the scope slides over that. So that's... You know, it's really convenient to how that, that goes together. And then uh, in the two power scope, I'm not going to be able to use that because it's, uh, it's too um, far out. So on a six power scope, I would screw this way in there. It, ha it has to go deeper. So say on a six power scope, um, that would be really, it has to go in there pretty far. So, you know, depending on what you make it, um, is where that where that uh, objective lens needs to be. So a six power scope, you need to screw it deeper, and a two power scope, you need to screw it out. So since we set this at two power, I'm going to screw it out to about there, and um, and then set up the scope on the on the gun and um, zero it in and set my parallax error and and that's it. So all right, thanks guys.